We've been talking a little bit in these couple weeks about, about a weary world, <clears throat> being a little weary in this time of the year, in this Christmas season. And today I want to, uh, I want to talk about peace. Let's just pause for a moment and just maybe enjoy a little bit of quiet and some peace. There's some of you that have come in today and, and you're looking for a little bit of peace and solitude. Uh, if you were where I was yesterday at about 7 p.m., you weren't experiencing a lot of peace because I was in the parking lot at Target. And uh, it, was, it was way less than peaceful. But peace is one of those things that, that we often hear people wishing for, or longing for, or desiring in this time of year. You know, the, the stress of this season, the stress of this time can take its toll on a person. It can take a toll on our minds, on our bodies, on our nervous systems. We can, we can be exhausted, right, in all of, the, all of the preparation and the planning and maybe get a little anxious. Maybe get a little worrisome, wanting to make sure that everything is just right and just, just ready. This Christmas, many will, will wish for peace, not, not just from the, the, all the preparations for Christmas, but maybe peace in other ways, peace from, from conflict, peace in the midst of some, some family drama or some family, family difficulty. There's some that would wish for some, some stillness. In a, in a financial situation. Maybe there's peace that you're longing for in a relationship. It could be said that maybe the, the, the thing on our, on our Christmas list is, that, that isn't the, the latest and greatest. You know, we were, at, we were asked, what do we want for Christmas? And maybe it's not the latest and greatest gadget, maybe the, the coolest gizmo or the, the, the newest this or that. Maybe it's just some peace. And last week we, we talked a little bit and sp spent some time looking at rest and, and how in, in even when we're rested we can be anxious, we can be, we can be fearful, and, and we can also be not at peace. But we looked yesterday and we said if Jesus is the reason for the season, and he is, then resting in him should be our highest concern. And I hope that, that you, you've taken that to heart. You've thought a little bit on that, about how to, to rest in Him. But I want to address this idea, looking at peace today. Sometimes we, we find ourselves in life, and, and we're just saying, I, I, it's, it's feeling like a roller coaster, right? It's, it's just up and down, and it's here and there, and it's everywhere. And sometimes we just, we just say, make it stop. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that place when you're like, Stop, get, I want to be off of this ride. Can I take a break from this ride? <laughs> I remember vividly a time when, when our kids wanted us to help them not be on a ride that we took them to a roller coaster. And we thought that it was going to be fun and this would be an, an amazing experience at the happiest place on earth. And we picked the first roller coaster and we realized right away that we had made a grave mistake because it was not. It was not a good experience. And the kids are yelling, make it stop, make it stop, I want to get off. And this was the first ride. Ironically, the last ride was, was a lot more peaceful. It was that, that small world ride, right? It's a small world. Um, it's also the most annoying one. I was saying, get me off of that one. But the kids, the kid, that's your favorite. I'm sorry, that's her favorite. I just, I just, no, I'm sorry. It's a great ride. <laughs> but our kids, they want it off of that roller coaster. You know, God has a lot to say about peace. And we, we recognize that this time of year as the Bible declares that Unto us a child is born, a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. And the key point that I want us to, to understand today, to take away this morning, is that peace is not an idea, but peace is a person. Peace is not a thing. 
Peace is not an idea, but peace is a person. The idea of peace and the person of peace is in our midst today. He's in our midst. And it is possible, it is possible that there is some here that you may not be experiencing the peace that you desire. And you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come together on, on Christmas Eve and, and we'll sing that classic song. We'll sing Silent Night, won't we? And we'll, we'll, we'll think of peace and we'll even sing about it and we'll all even, even pick, picture that it was a, a peaceful and a quiet and a serene setting as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright, Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, tender, tender and mild. And then, and then what comes after that? Sleep in heavenly peace. Maybe that's, maybe that's your wish. Just for some sleep, just for some peaceful rest. You're like, I just want to sleep through a night and not be disturbed. But you know, it pro- we sing that song, but it probably wasn't as peaceful as all of the songs and the, and the pictures this time of year at Christmas as it's portrayed. It probably wasn't as peaceful as, as we would imagine. It was probably a little messy. Here's a baby being born, crying. Here's a family that, is, that has traveled. They're away from home. They're staying in a barn. The only place... Where there, the, the, it looks peaceful, the only place where it seems peaceful for a mother who's just had a baby is when they post it on Instagram. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like the, we see these pictures of, of, of moms and they've just had babies and they, just look, they look so peaceful and so put together. Ah, that's not real life. But the promise from God was this, glory to God in the highest and peace upon whom his favor rests. He said this to the shepherds on that Christmas day. The angel, it says, was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Peace was announced. Maybe peace wasn't taking place in that moment when peace was proclaimed and peace arrived in a person. God intended peace when Jesus arrived to earth. And he also had it in mind when Jesus, when it was time for him to leave earth. We're reminded in scripture in John chapter 14 what Jesus said when he was going to be leaving his disciples, he said, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. God the Father sent the Holy Spirit to teach and to remind all, remind us all of what Jesus said, of what he taught. And Jesus said, I give you peace. True peace is not found in the absence of fear or anxiety or trouble. True peace is found in the presence of God. It's found in his presence. And Jesus said, it's not as the world gives. I don't give it to you as the world gives it. It's not found in a relationship. It's not found in a job. It's not found in in, in family. It's not found in, in world peace. He says, it's not as the world gives. Jesus' first words to his his followers, in fact, after he reappeared, after his resurrection, he appeared to his followers and he said, peace be with you. The Prince of Peace, he is alive, he is risen from the dead, he ascended into heaven so that we can have peace, so that he could offer peace for our lives. And so if this is the key, if this is what Jesus said, then the question I think we should, we should ask is that why do we sometimes live without peace? If it's what Jesus came for, if it's why God sent his son, if God sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came and Jesus said, in peace 
Why is it, why is it that we live without it at times? Well, I think it's, it's, it's possible that there's some things that we need to take action on. There's some things that we maybe need to add or, or subtract from our lives. See, peace can be missing, I think, in large part because we live in a world where we have, we have instant access to everything. We have instant access, and it's, sometimes it's information overload, isn't it? We're, we're, we're connected, we're, 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 in, we're in, um, aware and involved with what's going on. You know, you're, you're getting an update that this just happened over here, and this just happened over there, and we have a hard time turning things off. We have instant access when we hear about hardship and, in the world and, and crime. And I'm grateful for instant access. I'm grateful for the, the access to, to, to warnings when, a, when a, a huge winter storm rolls through. We're grateful for that. But it can be a little overwhelming, can't it? It can mess with our peace. We have instant access, but, but with that instant access, our, our anxiety and our, and, our, and our lack of peace will even expand as well. Our ass, access expands, but, but our anxiety expands with it because we begin to compare our situation with situations around ours. Because we have that access, we, we look at how everybody else is doing and, and, and we wonder... What, why, why don't I have what they have? Some of you received some, some, some Christmas cards in the mail in the last couple weeks, and you've looked at those pictures, and you've said, why, how come our family didn't look like theirs? How come our picture didn't turn out like that? You know, we, we, see, the, we see the edited. We see, the, we see everything nice and, and put together and just right. That's why our peace sometimes goes missing. There's, there's no off button. In our, in our shrinking world, in, as, as the access to, to information expands, it's, it's, like, it's like the world shrinks and we're more connected than ever, but there's, there's no button to turn that off sometimes. Remember, I'm, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but some of you will remember this. You, you can remember that if you, had, if you were like me growing up and you, you only had antenna TV in the house, was there anybody that only had that? You didn't have cable? Yep, 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 antenna TV. And, uh, and so it was the over-the-air broadcast, and at a certain time in the evening, what would happen to the TV station, right? Yeah, yeah, you'd get the test pattern, or I remember a station that would play the national anthem and there'd be flag blowing in the wind, and it would say, we're signing off for the day, and, and then that was it. Like you had to go to bed. You had to, you, had to, you had to throw in a VHS tape or something. I don't know. But we, we used to turn things off, but now it's, it's 24-7, 365. But there used to be a time when there was no one to call, there was no one to text, there was no one to email, there was no social media to check. But in the midst of this, in the midst of the, the peace and the, and the, and the turmoil that we, that we find ourselves in, God still speaks. He still speaks. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So there's an offer on the table that God, God declares, and he, he offers it to us. He says, he says, don't be anxious if you're seeking peace. Don't be anxious, but pray about everything. There's an offer from God to stand guard over our hearts and over our minds. And if, and if you're following along and you're taking notes, the first thing we have to do is we have to receive that offer. We have to receive that offer if we're seeking peace. We have to activate it in our lives. And how do we, how do, we do that? How do we receive that offer? Well, it might be that we need to readjust our, our view or our concept or our idea of Jesus, this Prince of Peace. If, if peace is a person, and it's not an idea, and it's not just a, a thing somewhere out there, but if it's a person, then we have to readjust our concept. If we want to experience real peace, we need to understand and know Jesus in a deeper way. I'm talking deeper than, 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 you know, than, than the Sunday school lessons maybe that you remember years ago, or, or, or deeper, than the, deeper than just the historical information. There is, there is a need for us to receive that offer 
as we know him. See, a historical person, a historical figure that you just know, that you have knowledge of, isn't going to help you. Isn't going to help in that time when, when there's an unexpected diagnosis. Isn't going to help in that time when, when you're facing that pressure, when that, when that relationship was breaking, when you're, when you're just crying out and desiring for peace. When we, when we feel pressure from the, from the outside, when we feel it from the inside, it requires a Jesus who is real, who is active, and who is living in our lives. And that's who we, that's who we celebrate. He is real. He is alive. He is active. He is Emmanuel, church. He is God with us. The Bible declares that he is mighty, he is powerful, and he is those things, but he is also personal. And he is also knowable. And it says, Scripture says that he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He's, he's running this thing, church. He's running this thing. But we have to receive, we have to receive that offer. And as we receive that offer, it's vital that we release our concerns. That we release those concerns to Jesus. He's real. How real is he? He's as real as the person sitting next to you. He is real. But unless he becomes our our reality, unless unless we acknowledge that, unless we draw close to him, well, then he's nothing more than maybe that that nice picture that that you've seen on a wall or or something depicted. Like we have this idea that he is real. And when we realize his realness, we can then release. We can release those things. We can cast those cares. When we realize his, his, his realness, we, we walk and talk with him as if he's right there. And he is. But we release those concerns. We, we see in Isaiah 26 a portion of scripture that speaks to his perfect peace. And to, to just give you a little bit of, of, of context here in Isaiah 26, God's people were, were in a seri- season of fear. They were in a season of unsettledness. But Isaiah is prophesying about a day when there will be unhindered, unbridled worship. And it says, In that day everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. You, trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. You know, we we tend to be more familiar with imperfect peace, right? The Bible talks about perfect peace. We're real familiar with imperfect peace. Maybe you can relate. We can, we can be going along, hey, hey, I'm good. I'm, 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 it feels like things are together. We're going good. God, I'm trusting you. And then all of a sudden, God, where are you? And it seems like it comes out of nowhere. I was just walking in peace. But this peace that Scripture speaks of, this shalom, this this wholeness or completeness, this fullness of peace is available today. It's available to each and every one. It's what God desires. God desires perfect peace for his people. And we find it, we find that peace, we find that shalom by releasing our concerns, by fixing, as we fix our thoughts on him, because peace is a person. In Philippians 4, 6, we're reminded not to be anxious about anything, to present your requests to God. Don't be anxious, but present your requests to God. Be anxious about no thing. And the only way to be anxious about no thing is to trust God with everything. To trust him with everything. And once we trust him with everything, we can cast all of our care and our anxiety on him. As Jesus asked us to. As he instructed us to in Matthew chapter 6. He said, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink. About your body. About what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span 
of his life. God gives this instruction for two reasons. First, he says, you are valuable. You are valuable in God's eyes because you were created in his image. We are the only ones the scripture says that about. Created in his image. Second, he gives us this instruction because worry doesn't accomplish anything anyway. It doesn't accomplish anything. Not in, ter not in terms of, of, of lengthening our lives. We might think that, that our current concerns about anxiety and, and worry, we might think, well, that's something modern, that that's something that, that we're, we're experiencing more and more just because we're so connected and the world has, has, is shrinking. But, but Jesus realized, he realized then, and, and we, we, we need to realize it today, he realizes the, the power and the effect that, that anxiety and fear and lack of peace can have on our bodies, on our minds, on our souls. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares. He cares today. He cares enough that, that we can release, we can cast it all on him. Whatever is pulling your peace apart, cast it, bring it, throw it on the Lord. Cast it to him. And it says, the Bible says we do that by prayer and by petition and with thanksgiving. With, with prayer, we're having that general conversation. We're releasing it to God. We're just, we're just, we're communing with him. When we, when we petition, it's referring to a, bringing a specific need, bringing something before him. And with thanksgiving, we're acknowledging that he is the highest authority, that he is the one who reigns over all of it. And peace is available through him. We take it to the highest authority when we, when we pray, when we petition, when we give thanks. It's, it's, it's kind of like those moments when, when you need something dealt with and, 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 and you say, hey, can I, can I talk to someone in authority here who can deal with this? Right? Right? Can, can, you, can you take me off of the, 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 you know, the phone chain here and just you know, run me up to the top? I want to talk to somebody who can fix my issue. I've, I found myself there with, uh, with my tax return once or twice, where, where I had to, there was something got flagged. I didn't do anything illegal, okay? But something got flagged, something was weird, and, and, and it got sent for a review, and then we waited, and we waited, and I talked to my, talked to our, our accountant, and, and I'm like, why is this taking so long? Why, why, you know, I was due a refund, and they were, he's like, he's like you know what, it's probably, it's, your, your, your form is probably just sitting there waiting for a signature, and it's probably on some desk of like someone in the middle, right? And I'm saying, how can we get that to the, to the person that needs to sign it? How can we get that up there? How do we take that to the highest place? That's what we do when we bring our prayers and our petitions and our requests and thanksgiving to God. We are taking it to the highest authority. We don't take it to an angel. We don't take it to, to a saint. We take it directly to God. We have access to Almighty God, to Abba Father. There's one pastor and author who said this. He said, if we knew what God knows, we would ask for exactly what he gives. If we knew. And, and, and the Bible says that, that yes, his thoughts, they are, they are higher than our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. But we're invited we're invited to have relationship with the God of the universe through the Prince of Peace. And we cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And when we cast our cares on him, it doesn't mean that we, that we stop caring about it. It means we stop being anxious about it because we have taken our need to the highest place. It doesn't mean we don't care anymore, but it means I'm not going to be anxious. It means I'm not going to lose peace because I've taken it there and I know where it is. God, I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. And so we receive that, that invitation, that offer. We release our concerns. And the third thing we do is we, we need to replace what we release. We need to replace what we've released. It's been said that you don't break a habit by just stopping a habit, but you replace it with another habit. You stop worrying when you start thinking about something else. Sometimes we just think, well, I'm just going to stop worrying. I'm going I'm to stop being anxious. 
I'm going to stop not being at peace. But we have to focus on something else. And Philippians 4, 8, and 9 guides us in this. It says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If you're looking for peace, this is a pretty good way to go about it. Continues, whatever you've learned or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And Paul says, and the God of peace will be with you. Focus on these things. Make a plan, the Bible says, to to put the good things of God in your life. If you're seeking peace, find a way to put the good things of God in your life. There needs to be maybe some replacement. Maybe, maybe it's, it's taking some time to meet with God in a way that you haven't been doing. Maybe it's, it's taking some time and you're going to read in the Gospels and immerse yourself in Jesus. Maybe it's listening to Scripture. Maybe it's turning off some sources that are causing anxiety and worry. There needs to be some replacement. How do we sleep in, in, in heavenly peace like we, like we hear in the song? How do we receive that heavenly peace? It's realizing that God, he is the one he is watching over. He guards your house. He guards your business. He guards your family. When you sleep, God is on guard and we can release control. He is on guard. He's on guard as we check in with him. As we consider, as we think about where am I spending the, the, the most time? Where am I, where am I, what am I talking about? Am I focusing on what is true and right and pure and lovely and admirable? In the craziness of this season or whatever season you may find yourself in, it's important to remember, we have to remember to release our worry and our anxiety into the hands of God. And can I just say that, that this can also include, this can also include reaching out and consulting with a professional. Some of you are walking through, through things. Maybe it's, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's fear, maybe it's, it's depression. And we know that we can take it straight to, the, straight to the top, to the God of heaven. But God also provides professionals who are here to help us right now. And as God provides that, let's prayerfully release those things and consult with those areas, those, those ways that we can receive the help we need. In Jesus, we have peace with God and we have peace with others. Jesus said it. He said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. It's a peace that we can't explain. It's a peace that's not replaceable. It's a peace that doesn't change. And God says, I am on guard. As I close, let's remember this. Jesus said, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. He said, the Holy Spirit is with you. He said, God sent the Spirit to comfort and to counsel. Jesus said, peace I give you. And this is a continual peace. This isn't, there's no, there's no expiration. It doesn't run out. It's not just a one-time gift, but it does require that we respond to him and turn to him. Even if you've done it a thousand times before. You say, you, you say God, I, I feel like I, I, I've, just, I've been, I've been coming, coming over this road over and over again. Jesus says, come. Come. Come to me. My peace I give you. And God's peace is different. It's, it, there's no comparison between his peace and what the world seeks to give. It's, it's supernatural. It's beyond our understanding. It's beyond our ability to comprehend. And then he says, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. And, and this isn't an empty wish. This isn't, this isn't thinking, well, I, I, hope, I hope it all goes okay. I hope this turns out well. This is a, this is a bold assurance from God our Father. A promise from God. Don't be afraid. 
run toward him and stay close to the one who is peace. He is peace. As we walk in the shadow of the Almighty, He is our peace. He is our guard. He is the guard of our heart and our mind. He is not, he is not just the, 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 the Jesus with, with you know, the nice smile and, and the good hair that we, that we see depicted at Christmas. He is on guard. He cares. And I repeat it again, Philippians 4, verse 7. The peace of God which is beyond our understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. But it's not always automatic, church. It requires us to be united with Christ by faith. To be united with Him, with faith, we must follow His guidelines and obey His commands to live in perfect peace. Could it be, could it be that, that the peace that you, are, that you are seeking, the peace that you are missing is a result of not walking in His ways, not walking in His commands, not walking in obedience. It's possible. It requires us to be united with Christ. We can, we can disrupt peace when we, when we stray. And so it's important for us to ask in times of, of distress, God, what, what is it? Help me to understand. Am I, am I doing something here that's causing this? I realize there's things that we cause. There's things that are beyond our control. But God, am I, am I straying from what you have for me? See, true peace, it's not, it's not just when everything is quiet. It's not just when, when, when everything is still. We need those moments. We need that stillness. We need that calm. We need a break. And maybe, and maybe like, like we, we talked about last week, the, the most spiritual thing you can do for peace right now is find a way to take a nap. We need that peace. But it's not found in the absence of fear or anxiety. It's not found in, just in silence alone. True peace is found in the presence of God. What an amazing word we just heard. Click here for video announcements and click here to subscribe and stay connected with Crosswalk Online.